Who remembers Ridley Scott's Gladiator, a historical epic about Russell Crowe going on a vengeance quest to defeat the Emperor, played by Walking Phoenix? <laughs> It was deemed a classic film. Many would have critiqued it for being historically inaccurate or for being rather pretentious at times, but nevertheless, it stabled itself as a classic with its main theme song, as well as its epic action and its epic drama, as well as some psychological depth with the villainous emperor character that people could analyze. I know my friend Malika Ganji from Malika Wright has made a video talking all about that. In the movie, it's He's summoned at the end of the war, like the war's been finished and he just arrives. But in real life, he was summoned while the war was still very much going on. And actually, it's Commodus who ends the war with a treaty. But in the movie, um, he just shows up <laughs> when the war has been won by his father and Maximus, who is the main character of the Gladiator movie. But back to the topic at hand. Gladiator was deemed as a classic, and to this day people still look up at the film. I myself would probably give Gladiator hmm, a 9 out of 12 or something like that. It was a pretty good film for what it was. So now, after all this time, Gladiator 2 has arrived. And it left so many people with just one question. Why? Why does this need to exist? Because from looking at the plot description on Wikipedia, having seen the trailer, mind you, the plot seems to be very similar to the first Gladiator film. Although I will admit, I actually quite enjoyed the sheer spectacle of seeing Gladiator 2 on screen, especially seeing the utter charisma and acting brilliance that is Denzel Washington. I mean, come on. Who doesn't love Denzel Washington? The man's an utter amazing guy. People would have thought, okay, well, Gladiator 2 is probably not going to provide us anything new plot-wise, but at the very least, it's going to be entertaining with the sheer spectacle of some of the fight scenes. After all, we've just seen a flooded arena and rhinoceroses, or rhinos, however you define it. <laughs> Surely those fight scenes will at least make up for the lack of a story in regards to the sequel. But there's a glaring problem with that too, because as it turns out, there is a new television show on Amazon Prime as we speak called Those About to Die, featuring another acting legend, Anthony Hopkins, as an emperor character, which also features flooded arenas as well as a wide variety of brutal fights, which further begs the question as to why Gladiator 2 needs to exist. Ridley Scott has gotten himself in quite a pickle. I've heard it said on the internet, there is nobody who could ruin the reputation of Ridley Scott even better than Ridley Scott. <laughs> because it's a shame, Ridley Scott's a genuinely talented filmmaker, but it seems he's let his own hubris get the better of him. And it's such a shame. He's made some great films like the first Alien movie, He's made a few other classics. In fact, one of my all-time favorite movies is Blade Runner. So it's kind of a shame to see him stoop this low to the Hollywood schlock of churning out another sequel, not because it would make for another compelling story that would add to the lore, but simply because he needs to cash something in to, for nostalgia bait. Oh, but this is a legacy piece. Yeah, a legacy piece which, according to the Wikipedia article, completely repeats the same story again. This person brought up in a good family lineage in Rome gets sold into slavery and then rises to action to take on the oppressive emperor. It's the same story! So, what's the point? Maybe Gladiator 2 will provide something new, maybe, but for the time being, because of the existence of those about to die, I'm genuinely wishing Denzel Washington had an acting role in that Amazon Prime show instead of this. But you know what? I wouldn't be surprised if people went to see this film, if not for Denzel Washington alone. Scott Slinker signing out.